Hey, so today we're gonna to take a look at Leonardo.ai's best new feature, in my opinion. It's one that's caused, I think, a little bit of confusion. So today we're gonna to dive in, look at what it does and how it works. Plus, I've got some interesting information on upcoming features to Leonardo that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. So let's dive in. Today, we're taking a look at Image to Image and Image Prompt, which you can find underneath tiling on the left-hand side of the screen. Image to Image is something that we've had in the past. That's where we had our Pose to Image slider. Uh, image Prompt is new, and there is a pretty big difference between the two of them. So let's first take a look at Image to Image. Uh, I'm gonna drag an image over and drop it in here. So the look that I'm going for with this image is very much in that Pixar animated style. Uh, it's for an upcoming video that I have on Gen 1. So the prompt is screenshot in a typical Pixar movie, Disney Infinity 3, volumetric lighting. Uh, it's a pretty long prompt. I can put it down in the comments if anybody wants. Control wise, what we're looking at is this strength slider. Uh, the higher you crank it, the more of your original image that's gonna come through. The lower you put it, the more Leonardo is gonna stylize it. So you can almost think of it as an opacity slider in a weird sort of way. In fact, actually, if you have it super cranked, you're just gonna come out with your original image. So let's try it initially with this 0.6 and see what we get. So you can see at 0.6, it's starting to get that animated style, but it's not quite there. It still looks a little too realistic. So let's try lowering it and see what we get. Taking it down to 0.48, we're starting to get a lot closer to what I'm looking for. The hands are actually looking really good here. So kudos. After taking the step count up to 60 and playing around with some settings, we ended up with this, which is very much what I was looking for. That said, we do have some problems in the hands and the sword didn't quite come out right. This is all stuff that we could fix with, you know, in painting and whatnot, or bring the image of hands that we do like into Photoshop, um, you know, bring in our preferred version. And I'm just going to do a quick hack job here, but you know, start erasing and blending the two images together. So with just a little bit of manual labor, we can really hone in on the image that we're looking for. The really great thing is that it works across all the models as well. For example, here is another image from that same photo shoot, which I used the Dream Shaper model on to attain this. So yeah, your ability to tell the story of whatever image you want exactly the way that you want it is pretty much unlimited now at this point. So if you're working on something like an illustrated book or a comic book, um, now you have the ability to exactly pose your characters the way you want using references. So I did do a test yesterday where I was out in the city and I just shot this. And just by grabbing that first frame and bringing it into image to image and using a Pixar prompt, I got this out of it. It definitely makes me look way harder than I am in real life. I didn't, I swear I didn't put in like action hero or anything like that. Look how ripped I am. This is awesome. It also took out all my gray hair. So thank you, Leonardo. Um, but what's cool about this is if you bring this into Photoshop, you can see that this is pretty much a one-to-one. -one. So if you see these lines here, and as we reduce the opacity, like that all still pretty much lines up. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So what that means is that I think if you use the same seed that you could hypothetically export, say 15 frames per second of a video, bring that into Leonardo, have it export in this style and pop it all together and, and basically end up with a rotoscoped animated short film. I mean, granted it would take forever and I wouldn't necessarily want to do it, but it could be done. Another quick example of image to image. So we have this. And with the very simple prompt of a city street post-apocalypse, we end up with this. So I think one of the best use cases for this method is the simplicity of prompts. It really cuts down on Stable Diffusion's need for, you know, giant long prompts. Which brings us to the other tab in this, the new feature of Image Prompt. Taking our katana image and bringing that into Image Prompt with a very simple prompt of a female warrior post-apocalypse holding a katana, Yoji Shinkawa. Yoji Shinkawa being the artist that does the stuff for Metal Gear Solid. It's a style that I've always loved. So that gives us this, which isn't quite his style. It actually looks a little bit more like an artist named Jay Lee, but still pretty cool. But it's not the identical pose. It's something I think where Leonardo is looking at the overall vibe of your input image and exporting something that is inspired by it. I think the overall intent with the prompt magic slider is to simplify prompts down and kind of give it sort of more of a mid journey kind of vibe. And this prompt magic slider is definitely for image prompt because if you actually, if you slide it off, you'll see that image prompt slides back over to image to image. But if you are a fan of writing longer prompts, there's certainly nothing stopping you from doing so. Like we ended up with this image off of a prompt that I nicked off the community page. You know, again, this is the same source image, 
with a longer prompt that gives us this. Additionally, it looks like we're gonna be getting 3D texture generation, possibly as early as this week out of Leonardo, which is pretty crazy. Combine this with the technology of Wonder Studio that we saw last week, and I mean, there's nothing stopping you from making a 3D animated feature with your phone. So the other big news that came out on the Stable Diffusion front not too long ago was Offset Noise, which without getting bogged into a bunch of technical details, basically allows for more shadow and depth. There's been a lot of speculation that this has been sort of the secret sauce that Midjourney has had through like late V3 and V4. And if you look at these images, you can definitely see the difference that it makes. Additionally, Offset Noise gives us images like this, which definitely has much more of that mid-journey characteristic to it. Here's a few other stable diffusion images with offset noise. Um, yeah, it looks really, really, really good. And while I'm not 100% sure, the latest model, Leonardo Diffusion, which was released on March 5th, I think is using offset noise. If you look at some of these images, it definitely has that depth shadow look that we've been talking about. Here's another one in Leonardo Diffusion in the photorealistic style. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, but I really feel like this model has offset noise built into it. And if it doesn't, the next model is going to be pretty insane. And hey, since we talked about Wonder Studio earlier, if you want to check out my video on it, that is coming up next. Um, thanks very much for watching. My name's Tim. Take care.